Uh, so here is a question paper uh, done last year, uh, survey module 3. And in this question paper, so this is a November series 2022. Uh, we had a common question here. So with a lot of marks, uh, mostly, I don't know why people assume this question, but this is among the most easiest question you can uh, do. So this question, uh, they repeat this question nearly uh, every year uh, in the adjacent like four series. So I was only able to get a series that was previous. But you can see the question repeats itself. So here in, in the question, uh, so outline the advantages of an automatic site plumb in establishing precise vertical alignment. Uh, so this is an uh, automatic plumb bob. Uh, that question that is a little bit uh, easy. So here in question B, explain the general procedure for setting out works. So a total of uh, 12 marks. That is a lot. So this question uh, had been repeated earlier uh, in another series, but with a different uh, explanation. So here in this uh, series, they said, so with an aid of a diagram, outline the procedure for providing control of a multi-story structure. 10 marks. Same thing, same thing, different terms used. So providing control, uh, that is a term used in land survey. Uh, you can be familiar uh, with it uh, if you have read a lot of books. So that is used major in land survey. Then the same, so application of an automatic site plumb. So make sure you do a lot of research in this automatic site plumb, Bob, because it's always repeated. So they have repeated this question uh, even in the adjacent series. So I, I had only gotten this. So this question is well understood uh, in a practical class, but I can explain it theoretically. Uh, to see if you can understand anything but in most cases uh, I teach this topic uh, in a practical class so we go in the field uh, with a theodolite uh, because uh, we can't afford a total station but if you have a total station uh, that will be way more cooler because you can calculate the uh, both the lengths and the degrees so the bearings uh, but in our cases, so here, uh, if you don't have a total station, you can use a normal theodolite. And if you don't have that, uh, we have an, so ours is not an automatic uh, leveling. So we have a dumpy level, so an old one, and it has calibration of degrees. So if you are able to use even the dumpy level, uh, if the dumpy level has a calibration of degrees, so that is 0 to uh, the last, that is 360, you can use that too. Uh, so here, let me see if I can demonstrate anything. So having seen this question, uh, this is a, was a module 3 question. Uh, they assumed you had done something in general building construction where you had set out a house. Uh, either using the three for five method uh, or the diagonal or any method that you or the mason square so the procedure uh, is just a little bit the same but in this case you are using a uh, theodolite uh, in order for you to uh, prove it is done using a survey method so if you are in the field uh, I'm using this as an example from my book I had obtained. So this book is called Surveying Handbook. I will show you the author before finishing uh, this lesson. So I saw this example, best fit, uh, in which I can demonstrate something to you. So this is a setting out method. So here, uh, in our normal, so we have an existing boundary. And from that existing boundary, we obtain our baseline of the building. So in this example, they used uh, this existing boundary here. So the street, 
there where they use the that street as the existing boundary you can use that boundary as a adjacent building a road or any uh anywhere uh that you can see fit but uh, by the regulation of the local authorities the regulation of so you don't interfere with your neighbor you know that will be a conflict so by the use of the existing boundary in this question they obtained uh, a first so this was a baseline they obtained the baseline so this existing boundary uh, I was not a directly uh, right angle but in our cases in our practical cases i mostly use uh, 90 degrees in order for my line to be a little bit straighter so here they used uh, 84 degrees so that depended on the existing boundary but in other cases the boundary can be a straight line so if it's a straight line you make sure you obtain the 90 degrees so here you can use the compass you can use the masonry square or you can use the equipment that you have either way it has to give you a 90 degrees so from that uh, let me read a little so let me read the procedure then i will repeat the same so setting out method uh first point so position of pegs x uh y and uh, so position zxy in a straight line uh, separated by calculated design of the length so that had a length of its own uh, and then in the one next so the center and the level of the theodolite over the peg of z so they used a theodolite in order for us to in order for them to calculate the uh, angle needed there so you can use the theodolite compass or any method then they set the horizontal angle as that so as we can use a 90 degrees in order for us to be uh, more accurately so depending on the boundary then in position r they calculated the length uh, from z uh, and they did the same and then the next they centered and level the theodolite over peg x straight to z and set out the horizontal as 90 so here is our 90 so the 90 was obtained here so i'm only reading what they have written but i'm going to show you my procedure then uh in our fifth so center and level the uh, theodolite over pegs y and set at the horizontal angle of 90 to position uh, peg b and c and check the measurement uh-huh that the same then you check the position of the building um, and measure the length of c to r and that length should be equal then provide that is a straight line then after that you put your profile words uh, from the strings then you can calculate the height so that is getting the levels so by the use of this diagram i want to illustrate my procedure uh, used in practicals so uh, in my procedure so from the existing boundary from this existing boundary assuming my boundary was a was a straight line so my boundary was a straight line there so by the use of the existing boundary uh, i can establish the baseline uh, in which i can get the other baseline the second baseline of the building so by the use of the existing boundary here so this is uh, z r uh, i get uh, my existing boundary uh, here as z y and x so that will be the existing boundary that i have go or i will have been calculated uh gotten from the question there so from that existing boundary uh make sure it is uh, 90 degrees today so the baseline will be 90 degrees to the existing boundary you can use the theodolite or you can use the square or even the masonry 
um, so masonry square or even the compass so by getting the existing boundary i go ahead uh, and establish so that will be a straight line from the um, baseline that i've gotten my first baseline so my baseline will be z uh, z to x i'm using that so i go ahead and i want to obtain the value so i can measure here distance of either depending where the building is supposed to be set i can measure the distance to be either one meter or two meter so here from x to a that can be one meter and the same i will do for x mm, so i'll do the same from that so here you have already gotten the uh the dimension of the building so from x i will obtain my y so that distance i'll use the tape measure in order for me to obtain the distance and from that tape measure uh, i will have gotten my value so from x y uh, that value will be gotten then the same i will do so from x to uh, from y to b uh, it can also so it will be the same distance as from x to a so x a and uh, y b will be equal so having done that it will already have uh, produced uh, the building so one side of the building i'll have already gotten the one side of the building then from that side of the building i come so starting with a i put there my theodolite and then i put my ranging rod at b so i uh put uh, so i change the coordinates so i'll have set my theodolite to zero so after of setting my theodolite to zero having seen b in the cross hairs uh in the center of the cross here uh vertically uh the ranging rod i'll have located it there then i will set it to zero then i move my instrument so here will be in the anticlockwise so i will move my instrument in the anticlockwise direction so i'll move it uh in the y so i'll move it in the axis so i'll move it in the left side from where my position will be so from that i'll go until my theodolite uh shows a 90 degrees so when it indicates a 90 degrees i will stop there so i will go again so any value in that axis will be uh, 90 from position b so having obtained that 90 there so i will come again with my second ranging rod and i will put the ranging rod as further as i can get uh, having i uh, located there so my ranging rod will be exactly at the crosshairs where my 90 degrees was obtained so after having obtained that i will go again and measure the value so that i will tie a string from where my instrument is the center of the instrument to where the ranging rod will obtain i'll put a peg there and i will measure using a string then i'll measure the distance so if this distance here is 30 meters i'll measure the 30 meters uh, using the string and i'll locate where the 30 meter will be so i will put my uh, third peg there after having put that i will go back from where the instrument is i will shift the instrument to d then i will put my ranging rod again to a so i will offset the instrument to zero uh, by the reference of a where the ranging rod is then i will move again anti-clockwise direction using the theodolite uh, when i move uh, anti-clockwise direction where my theodolite will indicate a 90 degrees i will stop there and repeat the same procedure so i will locate a ranging rod further then i make sure it is 90 degrees to my instrument then i come i put a peg after having uh 
grounded the peg i go ahead i tie a string from where the instrument will be at d to where the ranging rod will be located uh, after having done that i will again measure the side of the building after having finished that i will locate point c within the measurement using the tape measure after having located that point c has to be 90 degrees to point b because that is where we started and by doing that uh, i'll have already used two points that will be two controlling points where the instrument will have shift and i will have set my uh, house using that method so that is as simple as that so you can go ahead you can use so we have other method uh, uh used in land survey where our instrument does not move is in one position so by the instrument being in one position you will find the angle for the first uh, so our angle for the first point after having calculated that so this procedure is also used in uh, the big machine so the total station so in total station we already have the coordinates you can use that but if you don't have the goodness you can use this method used in um, i saw it in our land surveyor students so the instrument is placed in one position with the reference to uh, any line so by the use of that so they so you calculate and you find the difference in both the angles uh, you see if those points are uh, they are aligned then from that you calculate also the angle you do the same until you get the corners of all those buildings yeah but that procedure is for another day so that will be all you can go and you can look at that procedure so this book can be downloaded online uh anywhere so this is a a book i got so introduction to surveying second edition uh the publisher is here and the writer so you can check the book and you see the more example so the author of that book is michelle 